Hey everybody, corn fed lady here. And today, I'm gonna give you some updates on the garden. But first, let's get these guys some snacks. We have a local source where we can get free bread. So I always give it to the chickens and pigs. You guys want some bread? We're just gonna stare at the camera. Huh? You guys want some bread too? Where's Aggie? Aggie, get some bread. Doop. Well, that's one bag of bread. Let's give the second one to the pigs. We got some bread. Hi, you want some treats? Let me put this camera down. Oh, don't touch the wire. It's a zappy zappy. Spot likes to eat it right out of my hand. Don't you, Spot? Oh, watch the fingers. That's good, pigs. All right, let's go out and check on that garden. Now, we are still in a drought. We haven't had rain for about three weeks now. Um, but we have been watering the garden every other night. So we've been able to keep it alive so far. You can see we've got three rows of carrots going pretty nice. Uh, this is a half a row of carrots. <clears throat> Excuse my voice, but I've got kind of a sore throat from all this smoky haze from the wildfires in Canada. Uh, and then we've got a half a row of spinach. Now I've been cutting off of this spinach every single day and giving some to the rabbits. We've got the rabbits in these grow out tractors and we've also got our breeder rabbits and I've been feeding a little to all of them um, along with some lettuce. And you can see the lettuce is doing really well too. It's nice and thick. Now what we use is a cut and come again method. So we don't wait for this to turn into like a head of lettuce or cabbage. We just take these leaves and kind of cut them off um, about an inch or two off the ground and then they just grow right back within a couple days. And I've also been cutting off of the kale every day and giving them a little bit of that. They really enjoy it. You can see where I've made all the cuttings so far, all these little cut tips. So they've been getting quite a bit of kale, lettuce, and spinach every single day. And next to that, we've got broccoli. Broccoli's doing pretty good. It's getting pretty big now. 
and the snap peas are even starting to flower. Where's that one? Oh, right here you can see a flower. Hey, Gabby. You been doing a good job protecting the garden? And again, I've got these snap peas growing up these strings. This is just some yarn going up. And then it's like a shoestring, a little bit stronger string across the top there that all these little um, yarn strings hang down from. And each of the snap peas has its own string to grow up. And I've just been training them with these little tendrils. Every few days, I'll wrap the tendrils along the wire again uh, with a branch like this that's kind of sticking out, just twisted around. And after a while, it will just cling to it itself and continue growing up the line. And yesterday, my husband installed a couple of more T-posts so that I can make some trellises for the beans and for the tomatoes and for the cucumbers. Now, we've also got some pepper starts going in here and they're doing fairly well. Uh, you can see some new growth on them. Some of them are bigger than others. Some of them were a little bit stunted by the transplanting process, which is why I like to direct seed. But some of these you can see are actually doing really well and they've taken off. So these will be the ones that we keep and I'll thin out about every second or third one uh, just because I planted them pretty tight together. They'll need more room than that to grow and finish out. Now our pepper seeds have started popping up. We've got a few little sprouts along the row here, here, um, here, here. So they are starting to come in just kind of slowly. Uh, they are the last thing that's gonna be sprouting in here, it looks like. And then these are the tomato sprouts and these are doing really well. It's a nice thick row. Again, I'll have to thin this out um, so that each plant has enough room to grow. Right now there's only about an inch between each of these, um, but I will end up having about a foot between each of them. I just like to sew them in really thick with the seeds uh, so that I can go back later and thin them out instead of having bare spots. And you can tell where I left off with my weeding job. <laughs> That's a never ending job, weeding the garden. And then here we've got our cucumbers. There's two different varieties in here. And we're actually gonna be using these to make pickles. So I'll have to show you that process after we get the cucumbers harvested later. <clears throat> and then in the very back here, we've got some sunflowers and they're doing fairly well. And it's pretty cool how they follow the sun. If you don't know that about sunflowers, they do follow the sun. And not just the head of the flower, but the entire plant. So these sprouts, even though they don't have flowers on them yet, they will follow the sun. So when the sunrise comes up over in the east in the morning, they'll all be leaning that way. And then when the sun sets in the evening, they all lean this way. So it'll actually like bend over and point towards the sun as it goes across the sky which is kind of cool. And on the end here, our potato bed is doing really well, as you can see. All the potato plants are coming up and they're even starting to flower. Now you'll know when these are ready to dig up, when these flowers get done and all the plants will start to kind of turn brown and flop over and look like they're dying. And that's about the time you want to pull up the potatoes. So in here we've got Kennebec White, Yukon Gold, and there's a little bit of store-bought russet potatoes at the end here. And they finally decided to start sprouting. Now, if you haven't seen the little five-minute video on how to make the easiest potato bed ever, that's where these came from. And on the other end of the garden, we have some cantaloupe which are being invaded by weeds. Uh, this is the last strip of the garden that I need to weed out, really. But these are some cantaloupe plants, and we've put them here on the edge of this black cloth so they can grow and vine out across here and keep the cantaloupes nice and clean. And they go down to right here. 
and then you see this plant is different than this one. This is our watermelon, um, and they go all the way down to the end by the sunflowers. Now we do have four different varieties of watermelon this year. Um, we've got two traditional that we had last year, which are the Crimson Sweet and the Sugar Baby. And then we also planted two kind of fun varieties. One of them is a yellow watermelon, and the other one is an orange watermelon. And then in the back here, we've got our corn patch going. Now, because of the drought, I have not yet seeded the second wave of sweet corn, because um, I'm worried about it not getting enough moisture to sprout properly. But you can see the first wave is doing just fine. Some of this corn is actually getting pretty tall now. Um, it's, oh, I don't know, a half a foot tall. And we've got five rows in here. It's about 200 plants, uh, which we'll probably get about 150 of. That's been about our growth rate, 75%. Um, and then, hopefully, it's going to rain this weekend, is what they say anyhow. It's been weeks, so I don't know if I believe them anymore. <laughs> but they say it's going to rain this weekend, so maybe I can plant in that second wave of sweet corn. And that's so that we can have waves of harvest of sweet corn. Um, because it takes a long time to, to harvest it, and it needs preserved. It can't just sit on the counter uh, all year. So I'll need time to preserve all this corn and I generally do that in the freeze dryer and I'll show you how I do that again uh, once it's harvest time. Well that's it for our gardening update video today. I'm gonna have to cut this one short because my throat and voice are kind of cutting out. Y'all have a good one. We'll see you next time.